All right. Today we're studying on Lesson 7. And as I was turning my quarterly to Lesson 7, I thought, well, you know, 7 and 7 is 14. And I think that's how many lessons we have this quarter, quarter is 14. And I thought, well, this is going to be halfway. We'll be halfway through our through our quarterly already. Just seemed like we got started, but here we are. Time time flies, I guess. When you're when you're the older you get, it seems like the faster it goes. But anyway, we we uh, we can be thankful that God God's with us and all. And the title of our lesson today is Christ Resurrection. Christ resurrection. Now we studied last last Sunday. What was the title of the, our uh, lesson? Christ crucifixion. You know, and I told you that was a that was a dark day for the disciples and and for the people that uh, associated themselves with Christ. That was a very dark day. But Christ's resurrection is a very bright day. You might say. In order to resurrect, what has to happen first? In order to resurrect, what has to happen first? You have to have a death. You have to have a death. And I, and I kind of pointed out last Sunday that when Jesus died on the cross, He died. He was dead. He wasn't just passed out or He wasn't just in a coma. He was dead. Jesus was dead. And, uh, and today we're going to study His resurrection or Him coming back to life from the dead. From the dead. Uh, you know, we have a song in our, in our uh, song books, or maybe not in this one, but anyway, in, in some song books. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. That's, that's the way that song goes. I serve a risen Savior. You know, if and as we study here, if Jesus had not raised, had not raised from the dead, has not resurrected, it would be a sad day for us. It would be it. It would we, we probably wouldn't even exist. But you know, we it it would Christianity is based upon the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is that bought the plan of salvation so that all we got to do is accept it. We don't have to work and spend millions of dollars to get it. All we've got to do is accept what Jesus has already done for it. Why? Because of the love of God, because of the love of Jesus Christ coming down and submitting himself to this process, we have salvation or we can uh, accept salvation freely given to us. Freely, freely given. You know, we like free things, don't we? We like free things. Now, it cost a price, but the price has already been paid and it's offered to us for free. And so it's up to us then. Our memory verse there, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. That's going to be one of our uh, uh, verses that we're going to study. I'm going to read the uh, uh, adult emphasis and then I'm going to read the junior emphasis of the, uh, I like both emphasis, and that's the reason why I'm going to read both of them. It's there, you can read the adult there. When Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea, a secret believer, and Nicodemus, who had come to Jesus by night, buried Jesus in Joseph, Joseph's new tomb as believing women watched, or as they, they were watching on. The chief, now catch this, the chief priests and Pharisees sealed the, to, sealed the stone that set guards to watch. Why would you put a live person in a tomb? Why would you put a passed out person in a tomb? 
What do you put in a tomb? You put dead people, don't you? Okay, that's what they were doing. They were preparing Jesus' body, putting it in the tomb, putting it in the tomb to lay to rest, you know. Even though he told his disciples he was going to rise in three days, but you know, that, that was far-fetched. That was kind of in the back of their mind, way back in the back of their mind. They probably didn't even think about that at the time. You know, Jesus died. We need to put him in the tomb. We need to put, you know, when somebody dies, you know, what do we think about? We think about a funeral. We think about a grave. We think about that's where they're going to be the rest, of, the rest of the time, you know, is in that grave. Well, I think that's kind of what they thought here. The junior emphasis is Jesus rose from the dead. He will never, never, never die again. He will, he will raise us to life after death if we are saved. And that's exactly what he does. When we turn our heart and life over to Jesus, he raises us from the dead. No, I'm still breathing. I was breathing before that. What I'm talking about, dead to sin. We're dead to sin then, but we were dead to Christ at that time. We had no relationship with Jesus Christ before we were saved. But this is what brings us alive again uh, to be uh, in fellowship with Him. He will take His people to heaven. To start out the, uh, the lesson there, i got another little comment here, a little, little reading. The chief priests and Pharisees were afraid Jesus' disciples might steal his body and claim he had risen. That was their fear. That was the fear. Boy, you know, we got we to gotta really keep a watch on this. Jesus is in the tomb because these two men, Joseph and Nicodemus, put him in there. Uh, we watched him. We made sure that he was in there. There's no holes in the tomb. You can't dig out. There's no, there's no uh, 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 a tunnel. But, you know... We're going to seal this thing up, and that's where Jesus is going to be. That's kind of what these uh, chief priests and uh, Pharisees said. And we're going to make sure that the disciples don't come and steal his body and then say he's risen. Therefore, they asked permission to seal the tomb. They put something, perhaps wax, or I don't know what it was, but that's what the, what, that's what the uh, cordy says, perhaps waxed as the closing of the tomb and put official mark upon it. No one dare break the seal. Men were set to guard it. How many men was there? I don't know. There was, but they, they, had a, they had a quantity of men there. They thought they had everything as they wanted. However, one thing they had forgotten. Let's read and see what happens here. Matthew 28 and 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Sunday, I'm mad in there, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. You know, this, now, you know, the, the women had not realized that Jesus had re resurrected from the gra grave yet. They have not read her. But this here changed Christianity. Instead of worshiping on the Sabbath day, that's when things started to change. And we worship on the first day of the week instead of the Sabbath day. Why? To celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what the reason why we do not say, uh, uh, come together on the Sabbath day but we come together on, on Sunday. The first day of the week, Sunday, came. It was three days after Jesus died. Very early, as it was getting light in the east, women came to the sepulcher. Think about it. Very early. You know, the day started at 6 o'clock, wasn't it? 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they couldn't do anything between 5 and 6 o'clock on the Sabbath day. They had to wait till 6 o'clock on the Sabbath day. And you know, the uh, resurrection took place in the spring of the year. So you take, and they're in the northern hemisphere just like we are. So you take 6 o'clock in the morning on, in March, April, in that area. You know, it's still kind of dark out, you know. You know, the sun hasn't come up yet. Here it's July. And, you know, 6 o'clock, sun 
already up, you know, it's already daylight. But it was earlier in the, in the year, uh, in the spring, and so, you know, it's very early. The light, light was just, just more or less just dawning. Very early, as it was getting light in the east, the women came to the sepulchre. There were Mary Magdalene, Mary, Salome, and some others. We know not how many they brought spices to put on the body of Jesus. Uh, in Mark's rendition of it, I'm going to read Mark 16, 1 through 3. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, Salome, had brought sp sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher as the rising of the sun. And they said unto themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? You know, that was the big question. You know, we're, we're women and, you know, they sealed that thing up and probably put a seal on it. And, but, well, we'll see what happens and, you know, we'll go. Aren't you glad they went? Aren't you glad they went? Uh, aren't they glad they went? I'm sure they are. Verse 2, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. A great earthquake. You know, you know, California has a lot of earthquakes. And you know, I have been in one of California's earthquake, but it was a small one. We were traveling out there um, back in the early 90s, I guess it was. And uh, the earthquake hit one day as we were traveling out. We was from New Mexico and in that area in Arizona. And then that night we spent the night in California and we had heard that they had had an earthquake and all and you know next morning we were laying there in bed kind of waking up and all of a sudden I felt my shelf just shake a little bit you know and I thought I didn't move and I looked up and the swag lamp was swing, swinging just a little bit you know just just a little bit and you know, my that was the first time I'd ever, ever experienced the earthquake. It was just an aftershock, was all it was. I was told later, you know. And, and uh, oh, that's just a little bitty thing, you know. And I thought, well, that's enough for me. But you know, this was a earthquake. This was a major earthquake that they had here. It was a shakening. What caused it? Something the priest. The chief priest could not guard against. That's what it was. The one they had forgotten, God, sent an angel down, down, down from heaven. He rolled back the stone and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment as white as snow. Kind of reminds us the, 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 the clothing and the appearance kind of reminds us of Jesus' transfiguration, doesn't it? You know, that's kind of what, they, what, what it was talked about when we studied about the transfiguration of Jesus, was white as snow, white as snow, raiment white as snow. And you know, there was two other guys that appeared with him that looked a lot like that. Moses and uh, Elijah, I believe is who it was, but... Moses, Elijah, Jesus, white as snow, white as snow, you know, and, uh, and uh, 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 pure, pure is what they were, what they're talking about. And verse 4 says, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake. The keepers was the ones that were shaken and became as dead men. Maybe if we play like we're dead, maybe they'll let us alone, whatever it is. You know, my, I wasn't expecting this from, from them disciples that's supposed to steal him away. It wasn't the disciples. It wasn't the disciples. It was God doing the shakening. It was Jesus coming alive is what it was. There's no tomb that could hold him. They could have welded that stone on there. It wouldn't have held him. It wouldn't have held him. Why did the keeper stop him? Why didn't the keeper stop him? There was not a chance that they could stop him. What was happening was way out of their hands. It was way out of their hands. You know, when God does something, 
we're not going to stop it. Hmm. When God makes up his mind to do something, me as a mere person as I am, I can't stop him. I can't stop him. Well, I could get a bunch of us people together and we're not going to stop it. God, what he says is going to happen. It's going to happen. If he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If he says something's not going to happen and look like it's going to happen, it won't happen because that's how powerful God is. That's why, how God knows things how God knows things in the future is how he tells, tells it. Truth. It's truth. God cannot lie. And what he says will happen then. They feared so that they shook and became as dead men. Can you imagine such a shakening, such a... such a... Miracle taken place, such an event that has never happened before. You know, we're going to be resurrected at the end, end time if we're dead. All the dead's going to be resurrected. If Jesus comes while we're alive, when they're going to go up and meet him, and then we're going to follow, follow them. If we're dead, we're going to be resurrected. You know, and I think it's in uh, one of uh, Paul's. Uh, writings we're going to be resurrected to how we prepared here on this earth that's how we're going to be resurrected if we're resurrected as Christian then we're going to, we're going to be gathered up and taken, taken uh, uh, to heaven but if we didn't live the way God wanted us to live then there's another place prepared for them kind of people but Jesus was resurrected because he said in three days he's going to rise from the dead. He's going to raise from the dead. Because death had to be, death was the punishment of sin. And that's what reigned was sin. Death was the punishment. It had to be a certain death though. It couldn't be Moses. Oh, Moses was a just man. But Moses could not pay that price. Isaiah couldn't pay it. Uh, 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 Elijah couldn't pay it. You know, it had to be the beloved son of, Jesus, of God, the beloved son of God, who was Jesus Christ, was the only person. Now, would it... It, is he willing to do that? We learned that in the, the uh, uh, lesson two Sundays ago in Gethsemane when he said, not thy will, Father, but thine, not my will, Father, but thine be done. That's, 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 that's when he settled it all there. Verse 5 it says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, you know, have you ever noticed that how so many times when uh, uh, an appearance is made like this, fear not. You know, okay, let me give you an example. Right here is one of them right here. Okay, do you remember when uh, the uh, transfiguration happened? You know, the, 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 the three that went with Jesus, they were afraid. You know, they... And, it's, and Jesus said, fear not, fear not. Do you remember when John, the revelator, was in the, uh, was, uh, was in the spirit on the Lord's day and what he saw, he feared, you know. But then they, they t uh, the angel touched him and said, fear not, John, fear not, because I've got things I need to show you, you know. Fear, fear, they, fear not. You know, if we put... Jesus first, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. That's not to say that we're not going to be afraid, but we have nothing, nothing to fear. You know. He go well. Let me go ahead. I'm I, I can't cut that short. Fear not, ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. The angel already knew that. 
See all these women. I don't know how many there was. Three, four, five, six of them. I don't know how many there was. The angel already knew that. Fear not, ladies. Fear not. For I know you seek Jesus, which was crucified three days ago on the cross. That's what he says. He is not here. Okay, let's stop right there. What do you think the people, what do you think the ladies thought then? Oh, what happened? Who took him? I know the disciples. I don't think the disciples took him. Did these guards take him? You know, that can run through your mind just so quick, you know, when something like that happens. But, you know, the angel didn't stop there. He is not here. Why? For he is risen. Isn't that wonderful words? Isn't that wonderful words for us as Christians to... to and, you know, there's another song. Uh... Uh, he arose he arose you know I think most of us probably know that song you know he arose that is one of the greatest things in Christianity is Jesus arose that everything is based upon that that he arose so it goes on and says for he is risen Uh, do you think they comprehended that right away you know we come we got spices we're going to anoint his body with these spices to prepare it you know and 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 all but then here's an angel sitting on the stone saying he's risen he's not here he's not here he goes on and says as he said whoa yeah that's right he did say in three days i'm going to rise one two three crucifixion it is three days Come, see the place where the Lord laid. Come, see the place where he was laid. And what did they find? Grave clothes only. And the place where he laid. Nobody. No, nobody there. You know, we can... And, and, it, and it was no sleight of hands either. You know, they didn't, the angel didn't just say, oh, he's risen, you know, just take my word for it. Come on in and look. Come on in and look. Here it is. You know, he's not here. He's risen. The ladies feared. You know, we go back to the uh, first part there, verse 5. The ladies feared too when they saw, when, when they saw the angel there. But the angel said, fear not. He told them Jesus was not there, for he is risen. As he said, he did not belong among the dead. You know, you don't put live people in a tomb. You don't bury live people. You bury dead people, you know. And, you know, if you're in a tomb, you say you you're in a tomb you're carrying somebody to the tomb to lay them there you know if you're alive you don't want to stay there I guess there was one guy that was uh, that uh, needed some help from Jesus and lived among the tombs I guess but you know ordinarily live people don't live among the tombs you know he did not belong among the dead why because he's alive Jesus had told them before they had but they had not understood it. They, they did not understand that. The angel said, come see the place. No tricks, no magic, like I said before. No sleight of hands or anything. He wanted them to see for themselves and to be sure of it. That's what they, they were. Now you can go, and we're going to read here in a little bit. Now you can go tell your disciples that he is risen, you know. Let's go to verse 7 there. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Does an angel from God lie? No, because he's part of God. God cannot lie. God, you know, we say God will not lie, but you know, it's even deeper than that. God cannot lie. What he says, 
he it is. The angel wanted the women to tell and send word to the disciples. He is risen from the dead. He goeth into Galilee. You know, we as Christians can do the same thing. Tell the world He is risen. You know, some people out there think God's dead. Some people don't even know about God. Do not know about Jesus. Do not even know about the plan of salvation. That's our job, is to go tell them. You know, when Jesus, right before He went back into heaven, you know, He gave the Great Commission. Go and teach and preach and take the gospel to the people all around the world. All around the world. You know, that, that, that message is still good for us. You know, yes, it's probably been, it's been around the world. It's been around the world. But you know, there's still unsaved people. There's still work to be done. There's still work. And you know, Jesus' blood, the blood that he spilled on that cross has not diluted one bit. It's still just as strong. It's still just as powerful. You know, we sing that song, there's power in the blood. It's, it's just as powerful today as it was back then. Indeed, it may well be that the rolling away of stone was unnecessary for Jesus' rising. Jesus' ra- rising, yeah. May have been followed. It may even followed it. For he passed through the shut doors when the disciples uh, uh, were. You know, I don't know how that was. I don't know if when Jesus rose in the, in the tomb, if he just went through that stone or went through that, that, that tomb or if he came out the door. I don't know. The guards didn't know either because they were, they were playing as if they were dead, you know. They didn't see it, but they knew something happened. And, you know, when we experience salvation, we know that something happened that day, very much so. God wanted to show the empty tomb. He wanted the facts of the resurrection known. The rolling away of the stone was for us to see for ourselves. You know, that, uh, that tomb was empty. That tomb was empty. There was not a body in that tomb. It was a brand new tomb. Jesus' body was placed in there. But three days later, that tomb was empty. And it wasn't because the body was taken away, but it was because that body came alive. It's because that body came alive. You know, we, uh, uh, we studied oh, some time ago about uh, Lazarus being brought back to life, you know. And, you know, he was in, in the tomb he was in there with dead people too. And you know, Jesus called for him, Lazarus, come forth. And what happened? Lazarus came forth. You know, he didn't go back into that tomb to live or anything. He came forth because he was alive. But you know, the difference between that resurrection or, or, or bringing back to life and this resurrection was that Jesus was resurrected to never die again. That was the difference. Lazarus died again. It's not recorded in the Bible or I haven't found it anywhere. But we know that Lazarus passed away again. And you know, I've often thought, I wonder if he passed away before the, his sisters did and if they had to re-mourn his, his uh, uh, death the second time. You know, I just kind of wondered about that or if maybe he outlived the other two. I don't know. You know, but you know, we know that Lazarus died again, Dan. And you know, one of his sisters, Martha, I believe it was, said, Yes, Lord, I know he's going to raise again at the resurrection. They knew about the resurrection, you know, but you know, that had never happened before. And so, you know, this, this. But you know, the rolling away of the stone was for us to see for ourselves. For Mere people that, you know, it's not, it's not a trickery. You know, if there's any other kind of a religion, a lot of 
well, I will say all the other religions is due to trickery. But you know, Christianity is true and faithful religion. Verse 8, And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear, with fear and great joy. You know, man, I, them, them women probably left saying, I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, I, I don't know what to think of this. You know, this is, this is something way out of the ordinary. But you know, they also had great joy though too. Great joy. You know, Jesus is alive somewhere. We'll be able to communicate with him again. You know, when he was hanging on the cross and, and, and they taken him off the cross, you couldn't communicate with him. You can't communicate with dead people. You know, my father passed away about a year ago. And when he was laying in that casket, I couldn't communicate with him. I could talk to him, but that's all I could do. I couldn't get no response back from him. You know, and that's, that's the way dead people are. You can't get... But we can communicate with him because he's alive. He's alive. And did run to bring his disciples word. Did you ever have good news to tell? Something no one else knew? Have you ever had that? Have you ever, have you ever had new, good news that, that you couldn't tell anybody? You hadn't told anybody? Nobody else knows about it. How glad you were to tell it. You know, it's... It's always nice to be a bearer of good news, isn't it? Yeah, a whole lot better than bad news, isn't it? You know, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, that was bad news, you know. And, and you know, everybody kind of stayed hid and kind of hush-hush and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, these women found Jesus had, arrived, had risen from the grave. And what did they want to do? Well, let's go find Peter. Let's go find John. Let's go find James. Let's go tell them. You know, we're the first ones to find this out, I think. So let's go tell them. Let's go tell them. How they hurried, these women, it says they run. They probably did. Uh, they was, their hearts was beating fast. Uh, they, they still had maybe a little bit of fear, but they had great joy too. This is still great news. This is still great news. You know, the first time I heard the, the, the Easter story, I'm going to call it the Easter story, first time I heard that, I thought, my, how sad it was the day of the crucifixion, but then the resurrection, how happy it is. And you know, that was even before I was saved, you know, and I didn't ex hadn't experienced salvation. But you know, when you experience salvation, that's when it really becomes alive to you. You know, Christ dwelling within my heart. I know He lives. How do I know He lives? Because He lives right here in my heart. That's how I know. The gospel means good news. And what do we do with good news? We must, uh, it, uh, must be shared with others. You know, when we have good news... We want to tell everybody. We want to tell everybody. You know, we get a big old promotion at work or something. You know, we want to go tell people. You know, we get accepted into uh, a big name college or something like that. We want to tell people, you know, it's good news. And, but, you know, nothing compares with the news that these women had for the disciples and as they went to tell, this verse 9, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and fell at, fell, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Jesus met them on the way. What did they do? They fall down and worship him. What'd they do? Grab him by the feet so he won't get away, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it's that, but they grabbed him, you know. They, they were so glad to see him. Remember uh, Martha and Mary? 
were glad when Lazarus was brought back to life. You know, they were, they were glad. They were glad. Well, how much more? Jesus, the Savior of the world, alive. You know, that's what everything is based on salvation is based in this lesson here. And, and I'll tell you, it is very important to Christianity. It's important to the whole world. Now, the whole world won't understand it, but it's very important to the whole world because Jesus died for everybody. Jesus died for everybody. Let's go on to verse 10. Well, let's see. Uh, the women met Jesus as they went. Something even better happened. Jesus met them. He said, all hail. They fell down and held him by the feet and worshipped him. That was right because Jesus is God. It's okay to worship Jesus because he's God. That's what, he's, that's what he's talking about. It is not wrong to worship anything but God. And with Jesus being God, it's, that's, that's, that's who we worship then. Verse 10, and, G, and then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into the Galilee, and there shall they see me. Be, Jesus said, be not afraid. Again, there he's saying, be not afraid. The angel told him to be not afraid or fear not. Jesus telling them, be not afraid. How loving Jesus is. <clears throat> go tell my brethren, call them brethren, that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. What happened to them brethren during the crucifixion? They went and hid, they scattered they got out of there. Ooh, we don't want no part of this, you know. Jesus had to suffer alone. He was, they, they scattered. But, you know, Jesus still loved them. Jesus loved them. You know, yes, he loved them. But, you know, we stu studied last Sunday, he even loved the persecutors that was persecuting, that was putting him to death. He even, he even loved them. Those weak, confused, doubting men who had forsaken him in danger. Even, there was even one that denied him. He, in his moment of greatest triumph, called my brethren. Oh, Jesus, we thank thee for thy measureless love. Your measureless love. You know, we have to have that love that Jesus puts in our heart because we can't conjure that up. There's no way can we conjure up the love that we are to have just by making it in ourself. There's no way. And, but, but if we have the love of Jesus in our heart, then we can experience what Jesus experienced there. Verse 10, and then said Jesus, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. The disciples had run away from when he was in trouble a few days earlier. One Peter had even denied him. Yet Jesus called them brethren, brethren or brothers. He loves them. They did see him in Galilee, however... Some saw him before that, as we shall learn. Our next verse is our memory verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. J Jesus, Jesus, the firstfruits. I'm reading the adult commentary there, and then I'm going to read the, the, the junior commentary there. I, th I think both of them are very good. Now is Christ risen. Christ rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. Christ is still live, still arose. Christ is still risen. He hasn't died in the last 2,000 years. If the world lasts however many years it lasts, Christ is still going to be alive. Christ cannot die now. Christ cannot die. 
He was the first to have a glorified body. All Christians will have such bodies at the coming resurrection day when all are raised from the dead. Lazarus and other, uh, others Jesus raised still had the same mortal bodies and had to die again. Everyone that, that Jesus raised from the dead died again. And I think in the Old Testament there was some that was raised from the dead. Uh, I think Elijah, uh, the little boy that was up in the chamber, you know, he, he was raised from the dead, but he died again. Every one of them died again. Jesus was the first one to not die again then. Lazarus and, and others, Jesus raised, still had the same mortal body, had to die again. Jesus cannot die again. That's Romans 6 and 9 saying, Knowing that Jesus being raised from the dead dieth no more. Do you believe that? Uh, 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 Paul wrote that. That's a Roman, Roman letter. Paul wrote that. And you know, he had an experience with Jesus. Death hath no more dominion over him. Does death have dominion over us? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, literal death does. Yeah, we're, I'm going to meet it one of these days. If Jesus don't come back, I'm going to meet it one of these days. You know, I'm not getting any younger. I don't think any of us are getting any younger, you know. I, you know, and we might think that, well, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll reach death before Ryan does. Ryan's a lot younger than I am. But, you know, that's no guarantee. You know, I don't mean to scare you, Ryan, but, you know, that's no guarantee. You know, uh, my mother-in-law is 80-something, 80 86, 7 years old, you know, and you think, well, she'll go before I do. There's no guarantee. I could go before her, you know. So there's no guarantee. You know, death is sure. Death is sure, unless Jesus comes back before, but death is sure otherwise. Jesus first to raise with deadless body. Jesus was the first to raise with a deadless body. One that couldn't die again. That's what he's talking about. Jesus is risen and became the first fruits of them that slept. Jesus can never die again. He was the first to have a body that cannot die. Our bodies will be so too when we are resurrected. If we are born again as Christian, if we are born again Christians. Saints, Jesus' resurrection is the greatest of all miracles. You know, Jesus performed miracle after miracle after miracle. You know, in one place it says that if it, if it was recorded, all the miracles that, uh, that Jesus had performed, you wouldn't even be able to carry the book. You know, that's, that's how it was. But the greatest of all miracles was Jesus raising from the dead. He and his crucifixion stand between at the very top of the gospel story, the good news story, the gospel. You know, if it hadn't have been for the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we would be in a hopeless, helpless state. And you know, this is the gospel story right here. This is the good news story. The death of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because why? It made, it paid the price for our sins. And the only way that I could have paid the price of sin was through death. And that was nothing. You know, that would, have, that would have been nothing then. But Jesus paying the price. Why? Because he was sinless, took on the sins of the world, my sins, took on them, and was rejected of God at that time because of my sins, because of the sins of the world, my sins I'm talking about. That is the greatest miracle of all. Him being willing to do it was tremendous love. 
Him continuing through it is tremendous love. You can't, it's just, it's hard to fathom it. If Jesus had not died, he could not have saved us. If Jesus had not risen, and if he, he were not living now, he could not save us. Say, Okay, what's our job? Thank Him for it. Praise Him for it. Love Him for it. Follow Him. Do what He says. And live for Him daily. That's good advice right there. Because the Christianity is based upon what Jesus done for us. Jesus gave all for us. He even gave his life all for us and was able to come back alive then. I, uh, if you were running a little short and I don't probably have time to, to read that, but if you can read that points to consider the first one and the second one, the place of the resurrection. And then the other one is, did he actually rise, raise in body? That's, that's real good. There's some uh, junior questions here that I'd like to get to. What names go with this statement? Sealed the tomb. Does anybody want to want to venture? Okay. All right, the temple guard. I got down the chief priest and the Pharisees. Wanted that tomb sealed. Yeah. All right, here's another one. Who brought spices? Uh, yes, the women, yes, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, and Salome, yes, very good. Okay, who rolled away the two stone? The angel, very good. Who is risen? Jesus, Jesus, I heard that. Okay, who became as dead men? The guards, the guards okay. And who ran to tell the disciples? The women again, yes. And who was worshipped? Remember, they grabbed his feet, and who was worshipped? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Are the following statements true or false? Jesus' body really came to life. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Another question. Jesus can die again. Absolutely false. That's what I'm hearing. We could be saved even if Jesus had not risen. Absolutely false. You know, that is, that, you know, I said absolutely on each one of them because Jesus has an absolute gospel you know there's right things to do there's wrong things to do and you know so many things in this world today is left up to our own devices and you know like in the time of the judges people did things that was right in their own eyes and that's a very serious place to be because you can always justify what I do and you know Brother Bayless could do the same thing I did but it was okay it's okay for me but it, no it's not okay for him that's that's the way we kind of can work it you know and that's the reason why with Jesus and God giving us an absolute truth that's what I like that's what I like I don't like to be left in the dark I don't like to have to guess whether this is right or that is wrong or whatever, but you know the Holy Spirit leading us can lead us into where we need to go. So I'm going to leave that with you. Our next lesson will be Christ's appearance after His resurrection. So we'll see what happens there. Thank you.